Hello, everyone, and welcome to another discussion of To Your Eternity. We are now on volume two. The previous discussion on volume one was on Murphy's channel, uh, Murphy Napier Reviews. That's the second channel. And uh, we're going to be switching back and forth uh, to and until we get to the end of the, what are there, 18, 20 volumes of this, something like that? I don't even check. I think there's a lot. I think it's it is still ongoing, but it's close to exactly. completion. We're it's very close to the end. The case. So yeah, um, I guess we might have wanted to check into those details <laughs> before we started. Nah, let's just dive. don't join us for our knowledge. We'll just dive in. Um, so Murphy, what are your general thoughts on volume two of To Your Eternity? And then we can get into some specifics. I know. I, I suspect that people who know you well were expecting this to be a difficult one for you. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was an emotional one. It was a very emotional one. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts. I love Fushi and I feel like we already see a lot of potential in what he is to become. Yeah. A lot of the mystery, especially there at the end is really being brought to the forefront. A lot of questions being asked. Um, a lot of sadness. We knew this story was potentially going, I mean, neither one of us really knew anything about this story going into it. Nothing. Other than yeah. we talked about, it might be about grief. Uh, someone had mentioned that might be a theme in it. So I knew that there might be some, you know, tough, tough moments. Um, yeah. there were some tough moments in this one, but also some really good stuff with Perona and her yeah. selflessness and her sacrifice, what she went through and, so yeah. she kind of forcing her to to move forward even when she didn't want to. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff to unpack, but uh, overall a very, a very good volume. What did you think, Philip? Good. Yeah, I, I had moments where I really was quite um, enamored with what, the storytelling. Uh, at, at the end has me really intrigued. We'll get to the end, but there's a lot of, whoa, okay, wow, that's what that is. All right. At the end. So that that was very interesting. As you say, there are some uh, on the way, though, some pretty emotional moments, yeah. uh, particularly with this character. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about that. But I, I love what is being done with Perona. Yes. Uh, I, I really like her character a lot. Um, there were a few hitchy moments, I thought, in the storytelling where and maybe it's just me being a still pretty inexperienced manga reader. Um, where I thought, wait, wait, that's just a little too abrupt. I would have liked mm. a little more story in between this and that. And I just felt like, oh, okay, just, just in a few moments. And I thought, wait, how did we get here? Okay, all right, I'll just roll with it. But for the most part, I really did enjoy this volume and it has me more curious. Uh, we got answers to some of the questions we had in the first one, like who made, the, well, sort of answers, I guess, who made, who made the the sphere in the beginning? We got to see more than just the hand of the person who made the sphere, yeah, or the orb. Yeah, yeah, that's right, or orb. Yeah, I think orb is the word. Yeah, so yeah, interesting stuff. We do begin, and I want to get your reactions to this because I thought this was really cool. Um, how we have a flashback from Perona, and it's her sister, and her face is scratched out, and I thought that was really brilliant and i want to get your thoughts on that because you it, it's her memory and she can't see her sister's face i thought that was really interesting what did you make of that section her flashback and all that yeah we i about took it her. as the memory fading um as her yeah is that the way you took it too i it's in part yes yes, yes. yeah uh, just that it's been so long she's had so much time alone and now she has a new family through march and um and that just when you lose someone that young, you kind of start to lose their features a little bit. Yes, yes. I think it's also, though, possibly um, a defense mechanism uh, mm. that you're burying, that, that it would be too painful for her to see her sister clearly. Um, and the idea of her blocking that out is just a defense of a sort uh, which is very sad because obviously she was very attached to her sister mm -hmm. there's a moment later when we do see the sister's face mm -hmm. and it's kind of i feel like a little bit of a breakthrough moment but yeah here we we get her face all scratched out and i i read that as corona is um 
it's like I say, when people go through really horrible trauma, sometimes they they, they could develop gaps in their memory. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's unheard of for people to be unable to see the face of a loved one. Um, and it may be a, a defense mechanism against the pain of remembering that loved one. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I also, sorry, go ahead. I also had, I wondered, and I, I still don't know, I had wondered if it was possible that this was her scratching her out because there was some resentment there mm. with how alone she had been. So, you know, like you see an old photo of someone that maybe, at least in Hollywood, they've like burned a face off of the photo or X'd it out or something like that. Like maybe she had scratched it out because there was resentment of being left right. and that left her to just, you know, be completely alone. Yeah. And you can also see, and I'm sure you noticed this too, that kind of full circle storytelling that happens here with yeah. her telling her, this is a game, you know, you can't let anyone find you. And Perona does the exact same thing for March. Yeah. So I wonder if when we- playing Chase. Yeah. 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 Um, so I wonder if when we see her face later, it's almost like Perona realizing that what she did for her was an act of love and not an act of betrayal or, yeah. you know, something like that. I exactly that's where I was going with that too. Really? 100%. I think that's what happens there. And the relationship between Perona and March is very much like the relationship between Perona's older sister and Perona. So March in a way is it, Perona's March is a projection of Perona's self um, mm. as, as a vulnerable little girl who was protected by an older sister. She's assumed that role because she doesn't want that to happen to her again or to march um so she's assumed yeah. that role of protector but we also know why she hates this ritual so much because not only did the ritual seemingly take her older sister from her but it also caused her to be in exile from her people because they really they thought oh you were hiding when they were selecting the girls this time so therefore you're you know because you've defied our traditions you're out you know and and that explains why she has no family um, and why she has sort of attached herself to March. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, she she was just hanging out alone for so long. And right. then March invited her in. And it was like the one acceptance she had. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me. Mm, well, I was going somewhere with that, but I've forgotten what it is. Oh, right. Um, she with her sister, you know, she told her, I'll make you a new doll. So there was a promise of return. Yeah. And I think a lot of it with March, with how hard she fought for, I'm sorry, for how hard Perona fought for March was like, I don't want you to have the same future I had. I don't want you, you know, I'm, I want you to have someone protecting you and looking after you. And if I leave, I will return. I will come back, you know, which yeah. is what we saw it when they were imprisoned. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. So they're on their way uh, to this prison. They don't, fully know what uh hayase is i'm sorry for the pronunciation if that's incorrect but uh you know who i mean it's um you know chap lady the chaps lady uh, the girl the girl with the cool <laughs> outfit yes um <laughs> they're on their way and i thought that was kind of a, a bit of humor there when um when fushi in in wolf form pees in the uh the cart where they're all in there all like ew gross and they all have to get out and, and bathe and then he, oh he did pee for some reason i thought he was throwing up when i was watching it but you're right that I think is he was pee, pee. I think yeah was, you're right yeah and I, I i bet you that wolf pee doesn't smell very good uh, <laughs> so um i'm sure that their reactions were uh, legitimate and then he sees himself in the in the water his reflection and then he remembers uh, this memory of the boy saying remember me and Forever. he turns back into the boy. So I thought that was a cool moment. What did you think of that? All that that sequence? Oh, yeah. No, I loved it, too. And I also love the humor that comes with it with him looking in the water and then he changes and then he's like face down as a human in the water, you yeah. know, all that comedic. Slurp, and then, slurp, of course, slurp. they're all bathing. So they're like, what is happening right now? And she's, of course, happy because it's like, I knew you were Fushi this whole time. I love March's reaction, too. So cute. Yeah. And she really... Uh, she really resonates with him as well because she's a little girl who wants to grow up and he looks like a little, he looks like a grown up, but he's a little just like her. And so she's like, I'm going to mother you. This is me getting to play house. This is me getting to care for someone. And, you know, she wants to raise him up and she wants to learn with him, learn language and learn numbers and all this stuff. And 
he really takes that on, uh, realizing, okay, this is my goal then is I'm supposed to learn for myself and for March, whenever he takes her on as well. Yeah, I love that relationship um, between March and, and Fushi. And and she does assume the role of mommy too, uh, which is, we, anyway, I have, you know, we have, both of us have daughters and um, yeah. it's, uh, and, and it's just, it's beautiful really. Uh, and it's something that really warms my heart to see that uh, how March is portrayed here as, as yeah. being so affectionate and, and wanting to help and take care and, and be uh, nurturing the yeah. way she's been nurtured. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. There's an innocence too, where everybody else sees this very uh, disturbing creature that's unlike them. And that's very foreign. And she just sees this is a child. This yeah. is someone that needs to learn just like me. I can care for this. It's a very innocent and sweet thing. And I, I, I still don't necessarily know in what direction the series is going or what the themes exactly are going to be. But yeah. I, I have to think that it we needed a march in order to get to where we were going with him. I, I agree. I think that her presence was very necessary. Um, and and significantly, we, well, we'll get to that point at the end. Um, her being a part of his life turned out to be very important in the, at the end of, the, of this volume. So... Uh, but we'll get there. They do get to Yanome, y Yanome. I don't know how to say it, but the the town where um, Hayase is taking them. Uh, probably Yanomi, I would guess. Yanomi, yeah, you're, you're probably right. Um, let's go with that, Yanomi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, we basically find out that uh, this is very they're provincials, right? And so they're like, "Wow, this is amazing!" And and we also find out they're illiterate. Um, yeah. And this is a moment too here where we do get the view of uh, of um, Perona's sister. Yeah. And um, and she see it's a result of this this dynamic here, right? You have mm -hmm. a sister. There's Perona and there's March, and she sees basically herself as being like her sister here. And March's smile is what brings this memory back to her. Mm -hmm. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool, um, but they do get poisoned or or, or whatever uh, drugged, I guess. There. Well, before we talk about the drug, though, I do want to mention. I think that it was beautiful storytelling to show how excited March was to experience all these new things with the culture, yeah. only for us to turn the page and see a child being played with with their parents. Oh and yes, sadness yeah. strikes her. I think that was a really powerful illustration. Nice. Yeah. Good catch. I also like the, um, the message she sends to her parents with the handprint. <laughs> what does it say? She says, it means I'm, I'm doing, doing fine. just fine. <laughs> I, can, I can hear her little voice shouting it. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, so it's cool. so sweet. It's a beautiful. Yeah. And they, they don't realize that all they know is, yeah, we're that village, you know, the village and, They've right. never seen a map before. They don't realize how big their world is, how impossible it is for a letter to just appear uh, without proper direction. Then we have the scene with the food and the chopsticks and just showing how different, you know, how much of a culture shock this really is for them. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because they, they would be viewed as very parochial and, and naive yeah. and and and. Hayase and they are viewed that way by Hayase. Advantage. Yeah, exactly. exactly. She takes advantage of them, confirming my suspicions about her being not very nice. Not the best. <laughs> maybe, maybe not the kindest. Yeah. She may have had ill intent. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe a little bit, especially the part where they start uh, throwing prisoners at Fushi. Whoever can kill uh, him can go yeah. free. That wasn't, like a, wasn't so good. <laughs> A pretty sick experiment yeah it was a pretty um, sick experiment even the old lady um she wants to be free yeah yeah what was her name um Pjorin um Pjorin, thanks yeah, yeah Pjorin even she where like she knows them and she's like you gotta forgive me but I need to go free you know I've been I've been in chains for too long she's and, pretty ineffective as an assassin there but you know she's a good right. fake, fake shaman but as an assassin <laughs> kind of a failure there <laughs> but too also though you'll notice that uh fushi treats her differently like with the first man that attacks fushi responds by spearing him through yeah and then for her he allows her to get 
a few stabs in and he holds still for her and then just gets free. Yeah. So he's a lot more merciful to her. And I he wonder if it's her. because he, he, because he recognizes her and sees a relationship there, even though she's stabbing him. What do you think? What do you, why do you think he responded differently to does, her? Does she connect with him actually? Uh... I don't think they had a connection. Okay. I mean, she did yeah. explain to them, you know, the dynamics of. Yeah, and she's stabbing. Him. It's not going very deep, but yeah. <laughs> there are multiple stabs where he's like giving yeah, her shunk, his back. Shunk. She's, yeah, she's just it says shunk. Yeah, yeah. She got yeah. his chest too. She got him in the chest, and then he turned around, and she just goes after his back, and, and he lets it, it be. Hurts. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. He lets it be until the two other guards come in, and then he focuses on on them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good point. I think yeah, I think you're you're right. He realizes she's not a real threat, which makes me think he is somehow reading uh, emotions, the emotional state within the person as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe he senses her desperation to be free, um, a fellow prisoner. I mean, we I, it, it's pretty cynical actually what Hayase is doing, going around. Now we know she doesn't even really believe in this tradition, right? Mm -hmm. Because she's got a criminal that she's making um pretend that she's a uh a, a shaman. shaman so she knows the whole thing is fake but she's still going around taking little girls and sacrificing them because uh why because it, yeah. it we learned this i think it's there's a, a, a um they're trying to take advantage of these people uh, of uh march's people and probably setting them up for something so yeah and when the sacrifice doesn't pan out she really doesn't care she's just like fine come back to the city with me so i can imprison you like it clearly isn't a ritual that she believes in it's just something no. that no she participates in yeah but as far as uh uh fushi not hurting pure and i think he he realizes that on some level she's not a real threat and and also probably he's focusing on getting out um you know he seems yeah. like he has a plan there and he escapes uh, and makes his way out to- To be uh, captured. Yeah, to be, essentially to be captured this time. He gets shot with an arrow. Every time this happens to him though, he learns. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, that happens again. They put him in with March in order for her to basically take care of him, you know? Yeah. Uh, so- She's a right. very caring mom. And then we get to what's going on with uh, Oniguma. And uh, because he does escape again through this hole, he digs uh, yeah. seemingly quite rapidly, I guess. <laughs> or I don't know, is it because he just has so much power that he can make the the, the earth just sort of melt away there? Because it doesn't show him dig, 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 digging or anything like that. Yeah, you're right. It does seem like it is very quick because she's considering, she's pulling per fur from him. And then uh, balling them up. And then all of a sudden his hide is the only, or his back end is the only thing sticking out. So he's made yeah. progress quickly. You're right. Yeah. And I love how he keeps saying it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> and, That's his language learning. He gets, a, he gets a new yeah. phrase and, yeah. Yeah, and, and internalizes it and just repeats it and repeats it. Yeah. And of course, March, you know, being March just follows along. And this moment here when he chomps on, um, Oniguma is probably when Fushi ingests his essence or Potentially, whatever. Potentially. I, I assumed he would have done it during battle, though. So I don't know why he needed to do it a second time. Does he not just... The thing is, I don't really understand how he retains these new identities because yeah. he didn't take a bite out of the boy. He didn't take a bite out of March. Right. So why would he need to take a bite out of Oniguma or the bear and yeah. why would he need to bite it a second time when he took a bite out of it when they were battling in the last volume? Good so question. I don't really why understand he why he does point? this. Does he still see him as a potential threat? And he's Maybe. He you might be right. It might just be that because he looks angry when he chomps and then the bear responds and then March tells him to stop it. Yeah, it's March who's teaching him uh empathy here who's teaching him pity and compassion yeah. march is so teaching him compassion and she's pull, pulling out these the arrows the arrows that are all over it's not part of the bear it's been yeah. shot all these times yeah 
Yeah, so I think the focus of him taking that bite is supposed to be on March, not on him or how that affects his powers. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. But whatever the case, this is poor Oniguma. And it's it's just some random bear, I guess. And although it's a very big one. Um, but, very large bear. But this is our, his last moments here. Um, do you think there is a real Oniguma? Uh, or do you think that's in the story, you mean? Yeah. It's hard to say in the world of the story if we're meant to think that Oniguma is real or not. I, I think that... The whole ritual, the sacrifice thing, that's all bogus, obviously. Right. But is there a real Oniguma somewhere? Because uh. Hayase brings the bear back and says, look, we brought back Oniguma. So she right. she perpetuates that. Yeah. But what would be the point in saying, look, I have Oniguma captured if they want to continue the ritual? Right. And so is, and then too, also, is there a real Oniguma? Is is the real Oniguma the one that created the thing that we battle at the end of this volume? I, I don't know. Oh. I'm just observing some questions that I have in my brain. That's a good question. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I don't, I don't know um, if there is a genuine, if we're meant to believe there is an Oniguma or not. Um, mm -hmm. It's the only thing we know for sure is that there are definitely people who are participating in this ritual, who are conducting it. Who don't really believe in it um so yes. yeah and then of course march is is you know in her just instinctual compassion here and i love you know how she's you know giving this poor bear a little bit of love they're there yep. i'm sorry you know yep um yep i also something that really stuck out to me is when she's pulling the arrows and rubbing the salve on him yeah uh, and then you can see yeah, you'll have a better image. Yes, right where your fingers are. If you'll move, yep. So when she when she rubs the salve on him and oh, then the smile, yeah, tells him when these wounds heal, you'll be a normal bear again. I'm sure you'll be able to go home. And then her smile cracks, and she, yeah, she like you can see her start to cry. To me, that was much like what Perona is doing, where she was telling him a story, giving him comfort. But in reality, she knows the bear's not going home. She knows she's not going home. She knows yeah. that they're all just hoping for something that, you know, isn't in their future. Yep, 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 yep. The facade is is gone there for a second. Yeah, that's a good panel. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I also like how Fushi is watching and observing and saying it hurts. And I think he's talking about the bear. Mm. this time when he's saying it hurts he's there's a bit of empathy there happening perhaps realizing oh this other creature feels pain and now i understand what pain is you know i even took Just it as saying, some other emotional says, pain like was, seeing what, yeah yeah what march was going through and acknowledging it hurts what she's feeling right now good one yeah yeah go ahead sorry good one no that was that was great i also love the the thank you <laughs> so it was whose bubble is that is that fushi in wolf form is that the bear saying thank you to march is that is it fushi saying thank you for teaching me all about compassion um, no idea it looks like it's the bear saying it but that doesn't make I, sense right because the bear it can't speak the bear's a bear and the bear is actually a bear yeah um, maybe it is only being. Yeah. yeah so i don't know yeah it, it might be it might be fushi saying it i don't know why the bubble would be there but i feel like it's a connection though that the fushi is now connected to the bear and it's almost in the bear's essence kind of thinking thank you you know maybe you know what that's possible that's a good point because he does take on the individual when he yeah. when he and and you okay and that's kind of when the bear dies and it says a exactly opened. Exactly. That's right? a very good point because he can't take on another being until they've died, as far right. as I can tell. Right. So this might be the bear passing and Fushi taking on the bear and then thanking on behalf of the bear for all that March has done for him to make his final moments a little bit more bearable. For the no pun intended. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, and then we get to Perona and her. My girl. That's right. 
That's right. I uh, I love this character and her escape plan. And she's like this very naive. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen like this and this and this and and, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come up with some brilliant line. And yeah, we're, and we're all thinking, uh huh. <laughs> Sweet Perona. She she is an incredible. I mean, you know, you got to have a plan of action and plan of actions rarely go exactly as intended. Right. But she really is. She fights so hard, realizing that the bear has died prematurely. And so now she needs to go now for her plan, even though she's not fully ready. Yep. And then that goes awry. But I love this. Um, there's a pattern, Philip, that I always yell about. Not online. I yell about it in my Discord. But near every single uh, manga I've read so far has had a free solo scene. And it's uh, it upsets me. Because <laughs> free solo is stupid. But <laughs> Perona's scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgive her for. Although she does technically have a rope, just a really shoddy one. Um I forgive her for because this is such an act of bravery yeah. and it's such an epic scene, you know, with the thing breaking and the rope fraying and then she kind of bounces off the wall to get to a spot that might be soft enough and she's just, she's a legend. I actually prefer that part as as a trope to this part as a trope where it's, a, oh, okay, sexual jeopardy. and, and Always has I, to be guy's gonna try to rape her and she escapes being tough and okay i'm glad she escaped but i was like ah, did we need that part eh, mm -hmm. ah. so it shows she's tough and all that but um anyway she does get through that uh and had the mop disguised uh previously as a spear so she's she's got a plan b there i guess right she's amazing yes yeah. i love that i love that and i love that we don't know Unless maybe you picked up on it. I didn't pick up on it that she had the spear hidden inside the mop. No, I had no idea until you she know? took it out of the guy. I was Brilliant. like, oh, okay. Brilliant. That was yeah. such a great twist. Um, I love how she handled that situation. I love seeing her, you know, being strong and and keeping her head about her and handling that um, and then stabbing him <laughs> and getting away. Uh, yeah. She's just, gosh, I love her. Yeah, and then when she comes to march and and then she reacts with sissy you know i love that yeah <laughs> yeah you're coming with me we're breaking out i love it yeah that's good stuff and then this is a this is kind of a cute little like um i don't always understand these little like breaks mm -hmm. There's one where the, that looks like a recipe or something and i was like what is this and <laughs> yeah i didn't understand the recipe one usually the breaks just mark that it's a new chapter and yeah. then a lot Sometimes it's just like a fun little doodle to and, accompany. But this is March imitating. I don't know why these guys have hair all over. I don't know how they see or anything. <laughs> I don't know how they see either. It's it's clearly a, a kind of like, you know, um, no. Well, anyway, it's clearly a uniform, like a, a yeah. cultural uniform right. that they wear as the guards or as the people who hold this role but yes how do they see that's a great question they're like stormtroopers you know i mean they have this troopers. Like, uniform and they they got oh you haven't watched star wars yet have you yes okay no, don't tell the internet oh no <laughs> oops <laughs> oops <laughs> you know it's gonna be in the comments <laughs> only Murphy. that read this Watch no that. one's gonna be talking about to your eternity <laughs> <laughs> so, at anyway. minute 27 philip said <laughs> yeah uh so that's march i guess sort of an imitation of these guys when they're yeah. it's cute um so anyway yes then we get this they do escape but there's this and, and she's gonna kill so before kill. okay yes yeah, you were go gonna yes no, no 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 i just thought uh you were i wanted to make sure that we covered this scene yeah, where yeah. she she plans on taking the hide of the bear. Were you going to take head, that? right? Or she wants to cut off well, its head? Well, she couldn't take the head. She wants the head, but she can't carry it. So she was going to take the pelt and she was going to take the eyeballs An eye, yeah. uh, to show Oniguma's dead. We don't have to do this ritual anymore, yeah. which ha 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 Hayasi was declaring Oni Oniguma is dead. So, yeah. you know, I feel like it's fine for Perona to say that too, especially if it's a matter of. The elders of my village believe in this ritual, believe in the importance of it. They're not going to be swayed by words alone. So I need proof. I need evidence. And the bear's already dead. <laughs> so in March, 
is like, no, it's like, yes, understandable, child, childlike rationale. Why did Perona just say, okay, I'll try to use my words then? Why didn't she say, why didn't she insist? Because it seems like the right plan. Why doesn't she insist? I don't know. I mean, March is pretty adamant about it. And dolls? I mean, it's like uh, her her dolls, they're like real for her, right? Um, yeah, but to some that- degree, I don't know. I mean, uh, to some degree, I guess if March had to witness Perona carving up the body of this bear, which, which March had befriended uh, mm. as much as she could. You know, that that's a fair point. Traumatic, I think, for her. Yeah. That's a fair point. I think my logical brain kind of uh yeah. overpowered my emotions <laughs> like this doesn't make sense get the eyeballs but you're yeah. right this is my my inner vegetarian i guess um you're in- that's what it understanding is. this yeah so. what it is um yeah yeah i guess i was just what if you get home what if you get back to the village and you're like guys this is a hoax we're good and then Hayasi shows up and she's like, give me the kids so that you can survive. And they're like, okay, here's the kid. We already mourned her. She's dead to us. You know, like if you don't have the eyeballs, who's to say your words will be good enough? Yeah. Yeah. And that during that chase, as you mentioned already, Perona is doing her best not to scare Marge and is making it all feel like a game. And she has this smile kind of pasted on, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And she tries to distract her with a big fluffy dog and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. It's but that chase scene is really kind of where the worst thing happens so far yeah. in this whole thing. To uh, your point, actually, I want to back up a little bit because sure. she has this smile pasted on throughout the chase, but she also has that smile pasted on while she's trying to get the eyeballs of the oniguma. Yeah, and I guess now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more. Uh, her goal here is to protect the childlike innocence and mm-hmm. to not have her face the reality of what they're what they're dealing with right now. Yeah. And so if if this is a hard stop for her, like this is gonna break that innocence, this is gonna do something internally to her, yeah. then I can understand her saying, okay, can't break my smile, can't break this, then I'll figure it out. So I concede that point. Actually, I, I understand where she was coming from there. I think you expressed it perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of what's going on there. So, yeah. And then she, look at her. Yeah. I mean, she's awesome. She's amazing. She's improved a lot with the bow and arrow, too. Um, she has. And the whole thing here where she's where she's like, this is a game. We're just we're running away. This is awesome. Arrows come shooting in, gets her in the in the shield. She's like, no worries just stay inside you know you've got this epic chase and they're getting shot at at they're trying to kill them and the whole time she's shooting an arrow and she's like now it's time to keep quiet or whatever the dialogue was and you know i can feel how hard she's trying to keep it light while she's fighting for her life yeah and then there's the moment where and then there's the moment you know and it's not just that March gets shot by Hayase it's um she's protecting Perona Mm -hmm. and I think for Perona it's like no I was supposed to be protecting you yeah yeah are you okay I fell (laughs) off my stool it's fine oh no (laughs) that's cool I just misjudged where the edge was (laughs) there's coffee in my mug I promise oh my goodness that's good yeah I mean this is it this is a a moment that definitely kind of rocks you so yeah it sounded like you had some feelings about this moment so I'd really like to hear your thoughts yeah I mean I I I, it's hard because March is a child and it's not that I mean this is this is a world where horrible things do happen and, and bad things happen even to children and it's not something you like seeing but um it's something that should be dealt with in storytelling. So I don't object just on the basis of, of March being a child and, and that this happens. I was pretty attached to the character. So it was upsetting to me. And I am wondering what's going to happen with this character. Cause apparently no one else that we've seen, unless I'm remembering, not remembering correctly, no one else that I've seen so far has become a ghost the way March has. Like March is sort of present still in the story after she passes away. Um, Have we ever observing. been in the perspective? 
I guess we weren't we weren't in March's perspective. We were always outside observers of her. Yeah, fair fair um, point. I fair think point. she's the only one so far. Like the boy that you know Fushi's form is a boy. We don't, he's gone. You know everybody yeah. else who dies dies. But March for whatever reason, and maybe there's an explanation in this world. Like what happens? How do you qualify to become a ghost? You know um, why does March become one? Um, I almost took it as her dying like this is her dying and this is her subconscious kind of catching up to the fact that she's dying there's that but even later i feel like she's observing fushi as fushi's going on his journey um yeah i don't know that's a good point though that's a good point so i mean I, i think she's still around after she's she's passed away but obviously this creates a reaction in Perona, but it mm-hmm. also creates a tremendous reaction in Fushi, yeah. who has been learning from March, is learning compassion and, and what it means to love someone and to protect someone. And he's pretty mad, it looks like, right? I mean, that is not a happy Fushi right there. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, he goes to attack her attackers. He yeah. He handles the situation. Which is some kind of mercy. Yeah, that's an incredible, yeah. incredible panel. It is some kind of mercy because it allows Perona and March to have time together. You know, if they were still being pursued, then they wouldn't have been able to have these last moments together. Yeah, that's very uh, important. Kept fighting. Yeah. yeah, very important. And then, of course, he's learned from the last time he was shot by an arrow. Okay, you're going to shoot me while I'm a wolf. I'm going to turn into... Oniguma, so watch out, you know, and as you said, uh, that makes possible the uh, the getaway, but we get this flashback before, like, as soon as that, I, I like that kind of storytelling, actually, yeah. we get this flashback, which gives this moment even more significance, because we learn how March used to make cook dinner for, <laughs> for Perona, and uh, thank you, Feast. Thank you, be- Feast exactly what she was trying to give Perona again uh what she was hiding from her it's a surprise thank you feast yeah um yeah and it shows their initial connection and their initial game that they played I'm the mommy you're the daddy yeah which leads us straight into her asking Perona can you be the mommy now yeah be a mommy for me yeah yeah and I would I I would like to say that you know obviously this is a devastating scene. I certainly didn't see this coming. I didn't think that she uh, was going to die. No, it surprised me a lot. I thought March and and Fushi were going to be like long term buddies here. I did too. I thought they were they were companions to the end. Right. Um, so it it was quite a surprise, and it was obviously very emotional, very very sad. But I do really appreciate that in this whole time that Perona was trying to protect her innocence, you know, March wants to grow up. That's her number one goal. That's her number one dream. I want to grow up. I want to be an adult. And all this time, Perona is saying, yes, I'm going to protect your innocence so that you're able to grow up, right? And it is what the thing that causes March to die is to assess what's happening and understand it it's to see things for what they really are and not for a childlike game and to make a choice to say i need to protect someone i love because Mm -hmm. she's been protecting me so her death comes as a result of her choosing to be grown up and to respond you know so to me while her death is tragic there's also a lot of agency in her death and there's a lot of Mm -hmm. um I don't know. There's something very poetic about it to me. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, it, it's ext- tragic and, and beautiful at the same time. That kind of loyalty that's between Perona and March. Um, and then Perona just sort of ke- keeps trying to act out the whole, you know, oh, it's so good. This is, you're the best cook. You really, you're the cooking is the best in the world. And you can see it's, it's actually a pretty well done panel there she's not moving right she's gone at this point um and the next time we see them it's perona leaving the wagon and in an entirely broken state Uh, the panel of hayashi burned and broken and in that really horrifying state right and then the panel just underneath it 
is Perona smiling and telling her, so let's go home together. Everything's great. This is awesome. That too, I think that contrast. Oh, I knew right there what Perona was doing. Let's go home. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, because there's so many layers to it. As you just alluded to, there's so many layers to it. The fact that she's still playing the game. She's still got her smile on. She's still got her happy face on while she's looking at this horrifying picture in front of her. And then as you as you alluded to, she meant something else. We're not separating. We're this is not the end for us. I'm going with you. Yeah. Yeah. On some level, I think it's because she does feel maybe that she failed March, um, which is horrible and, and not how she, I mean, it's not logical, but emotionally it makes sense. Grief isn't always way. rational. Yeah. 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 That is for sure. Um, it's a little tough to be rational when you're grieving like that. That's for yeah. sure. Um, and, uh, there's this whole, you know, sequence of, of, you know, we're not entirely sure. Is this Perona's imagination of her, of March being a little bit older and coming home and being okay? And there are all the little critters that she made for her. But then you see that it's March, actually. And I feel like that whole time, it really was March. And March is, this is her fantasy or whatever. And, and Yeah, that's her grown up. Yeah. Like she still has the mean. headband on. She still has the same clothes, even though she's yeah. outgrown them. Yeah. yeah. It's her, right. So she's, she's passed on now and she gets to go home. It's that vision that she was waiting on. And yeah. then it's her grown up. It's her dream. I'm, I'm a mommy now. I'm grown up. And then all of a sudden she realizes, wait, Fushi's not here. Hold on. This isn't this isn't real and then she shrinks back down to her real self yeah where am i she realizes none this this isn't right none of this is real it's a really powerful illustration of her in her death kind of going through that you know people say your life flashes before your eyes and this is her going through her dreams going through what she the future she's looking for and then having to face reality of what's actually happened yeah. And what it says in the next bit, I think is really important. Mm-hmm. These panels here, struggling against one's environment comes with sizable risks. And this is a, this is a hostile world we're talking about here, this world here and, and our own. Sometimes it can endanger one's life. A human struggled and died. I feel like you summed up every single story ever written there. A human struggled and died. Yeah, that's right. I'm already, and she's realizing, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. But in the next panel is very important where she's leaving behind the, these imaginary, you know, her, her family, her past or what she wanted, but she did not lose what was most precious, but she did not lose what was most precious. I think that's really, really important Mm -hmm. Um, that she didn't lose in that struggle, which ultimately you lose because you're, you, you pass away. You don't lose what's most precious. Yeah. And there's something beautiful about that struggle and about the love that we find in the process um, that makes it all worthwhile, I think. So. Very well put. Very, very well put. And the fact that she then reaches to Fushi, hugs him, and tells him, let's go home together. It's like she's asking him, take me on too. So she's also witnessing Perona about to take her own life. Yeah, and she's begging him. Yeah. And it is March. If March hadn't been there, if little ghost March hadn't been there to tell Fushi, essentially, I'm reading this as March is the one that directs Fushi to stop Perona. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I, that's exactly how I read it too. Uh, She asked, she asked Fushi to take her as one of his, as someone that he's holding on to as well, as one of his new identities, new forms, right. and then sees Perona about to take her own life and begs her to stop and then and then tells Fushi, um, let's see, where is it? Don't do it. This stop panel. her, Fu. Stop it. And her hand is yeah. about to go into his hand there. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that's the moment, right? Right. So he... And you can even see that she's invisible and you can see the rope through her wrist. Yeah. Over here up at the top. 
Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She's invisible. She's a little ghost. Yeah. She's directing his hand, and his hand then comes over here and stops her. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. So we've discussed previous that when he takes on someone's form, he's also taking on their will or right. their characteristics, their memories, their identity in some way. Yeah. He's taking them on, and so I think what we witnessed was for the first time someone saying take me with you instead of him choosing to and then we see her will also transferring over along with her Uh uh and i think that the reason that happened is because of how strong their connection was and he Uh allowed that like he wanted her will to be imposed there yeah yeah that's beautiful and he takes in all of march's compassion at the same time yeah 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 because he learns with each death, he learns not just his own deaths, but the deaths of those that he takes on. Yeah, yeah, that is tough stuff. That is that's really- tough stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he saves her, and they they escape. You know, because he turns back into the bear again, and they can't shoot the bear down, and she returns home. Yeah, I love the way it's illustrated, where he grabs her so that she can't do what she wants to do. And then yeah. takes that arm and puts it on his shoulder and then transforms, kind of forcing her to grab hold of him yeah. so that she she rides home. And then I love her dialogue. You're telling me to keep going anyway? What a jerk. Yeah. 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 That's that's a great panel. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. What were you going to say? She arrives home. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. No, I'm glad you said that. And uh, yeah, she rides home and confronts them. Um, and they... They're like, oh, it's the Oniguma. And then he turns back into, she's not having any of it. And she delivers March's letter to her parents. And um, father realizes, I failed I failed here. I, I about, and I don't know what he could have done. He probably would have had to give up another kid or or they would have been forced, but whatever. He, it was he an feels, impossible situation. Yeah, it was an impossible situation, but he feels awful. And he says, I'm so sorry because I failed to protect March. Um, and Perona, should have been me. I should have been after, after her. her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there's that, I mean, there's just that little tiny child handprint there, which says so much. Yeah, I think there's something. <clears throat> I dropped something weird. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something really beautiful about them uh, recognizing that in Perona's eyes, she failed, but yeah. just thank you for fighting for her, for valuing her, you know? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yep. And I love that panel too, where it says March is doing just fine. And she she is smiling, putting on that smile again, you know, yeah. in that panel there. Um, yeah, that's just, that's really something. Yeah. And there's this moment too, um, when he's consoling her, when yeah. he's genuinely, Fushi is genuinely consoling her. And it's, um, it's really quite something, that whole scene really. Um, but the, the confrontation with the villagers saying, look, this, this tradition is really horrible, you know? And yeah. uh, you, you need to think about compassion uh in in our lives we often allow ourselves to think well this is the way things are and so tradition overrides compassion and yeah. this saying no we need to think about compassion first here yeah. yeah this is the way because this is the way because this is the way and confronting that confronting tradition isn't a it because it's tradition isn't a good enough reason you know there's look at the cost yeah. I really don't know what's going to come of this because she mentioned the stubbornness of the elders and how they yeah. wouldn't they wouldn't accept um, to break tradition. So I'm really curious how she's going to be able to change the system after all this. Yeah, well, is she did show her... them Oniguma, I guess, right? But yeah, good point. That yeah. is a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, is it is her word going to be good enough? Yeah. is the fact that she returned that they lost someone and that person was able to return and and speak is that is that enough or yeah. i don't know i'm i'm really curious to see if we get to see more of perona and her story from here yeah i hope so i really hope so i mean we get one more glimpse of her 
helping Foshi, who's being tracked by Hayase and company. And Perona's aim has really improved a lot because, well, <laughs> actually, she says, well, actually, that's not what I was aiming for. But, you know, no, she was going for the kill. Yeah, she yeah. was going for the kill. Um, Yeah. And they're celebrating because they're like, ha, ah, you got her and you let Fushi got away. And she's like, no, I, I needed to end this. Yeah. Yeah. But Fushi's on his own. And then and, and there is. OK, so. I guess it's Wolf, Wolf, and it is him turning into March in yeah. order to get climb the tree and get the fruit and yes. all of that. Okay, yeah. Yes. And so yeah, March is one of his forms now, and, and Wolf, March, <laughs> Bear, Boy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, until they run into an old friend, Pioran, right? There she is, the Mef fake shaman, crotchety old lady. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me gnaw your leg off a little bit. My goodness. Yeah, I think we're seeing the sort of comic relief here a bit. Um, um yeah. Which is we nice. see the practical side of her, you know, and it is interesting to think like when when Fushi was captured, she was like, Okay, so it sucks that I have to exchange your life for mine, but I'm going to, and I'm gonna stab you and you know, I'm gonna be free. And now they're both free, but she's hungry. So she's like, yeah, it sucks that it hurts when your leg is ripped off, but you'll grow it back. Feed me. Like, it's interesting. The sort of selfish. Yeah. I was <laughs> thinking self-centered. Yeah. Survivalist. Yeah. I guess we could call her. She's She has a very survivalist <laughs> nature. Yeah. Um, thinking about how to serve herself, really. But it is funny how Fushi in March form tosses the fruit onto her, you know, and bonk, bonk, oh, you know. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she's like give me the fruit just give me something and so he, you can see in march's face you can see that kind of like irritation at her behavior yeah. and so he's like all right i'll feed you <laughs> but she does give something to fushi in return doesn't she she teaches mm -hmm. him writing teaches him speech words, yeah words. yeah he and he yeah. learns so much from her so you can tell that they definitely do bond they they develop some kind of relationship over their travels together yeah, and he's progressing, you know. Grow up, learn things. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's cool. Until How do you feel about the fact that he took on March's form? How did that feel to you? Not not from a storytelling or from an intellectual, just how did that feel? I mean, even the first time we took on the boys' form, uh, it, it felt I felt very ambiguous about it because Really? Well, the boy did say, you know, never forget me. Um yeah. So I felt like that was almost a permission in a way. That's a good, okay. I like that perspective. March's permission is even more explicit, I think. Yes. Um, so I'm okay with it. You know, I think it's, it's what March wanted and March passed on literally in a way, a piece of herself. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm good with it. In fact, I think it's kind of beautiful. Yes, it is. Yeah. It felt really bad. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when I when I first witnessed this happening, I was like, especially the scene when he's in the tree as March and eating the fruit and then throwing the stuff at her. It's funny, but at the same time, I was like, I hate it. Like this feels wrong to me. With the with the boy, I barely knew him. With the wolf and the bear, I don't care. But with March, she's a character that I just had to grieve because I didn't expect her death. And now I've grieved, I'm like, I'm grieving her and I'm accepting her death. And then here she is living, breathing, moving in a different way through someone else's abilities. And it like, it felt almost like a violation as just like a gut reaction, even though that's objectively untrue. She gave him permission. Right. And it took me a moment to sit with it, to see the beauty in it, that he's helping her to live on and he's he's following her goals he's helping her to be able to grow up and to learn he's teaching more. him yeah yeah he's he's taken on her dream i mean he he didn't care about learning language previously but right. because that's her dream he's taken it on and he's being really intentional about it and that's incredibly beautiful but it's just interesting to me that my gut response to that was an objection and then i was able to finally see the beauty in it you know yeah yeah i don't have any i don't have anything to say about it i just find that an interesting observation about myself right i mean it is about connection once again and um connection can be beautiful and on the other hand 
it can be kind of scary and ugh, and what is this thing that suddenly they encounter? What is this thing? Yeah, this was so interesting. Yeah, I, this was fascinating. This ending, this creature that attacks Fushi, Fushi and steals his steals. form and yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a void in him when he steals the boy. Fushi, yeah. he can't remember the boy. He it's. It, I find that interesting because we've been discussing the fact that he takes on their will, he takes on their desires and all that, and their memories, and now that's been ripped from him. That's been stolen from him. Not just the form, but he can't oh. even remember them. So it's all that he took on with them is all being ripped from him. And then there's there's like an emptiness in its place. That's really fascinating to me. I agree. The whole premise of this, the way this, this story is working... It's a, it, it could be a really fascinating exploration of the nature of identity, which is dependent on memory, which, mm. and memories, of course, we all, I think, to some degree can acknowledge, they're not very reliable, they they're, they change, we're tweaking them constantly in our minds, um, so our, our identities essentially rest on uh, an ever changing uh, assortment of impressions and things that we're we're constantly tweaking and making yeah. better usually. Um, so it's fascinating. And then this, okay, so we have the attack. We have this, this I don't know, or, organic looking creature. I think it's a tree-like thing. Cause I think once it's defeated, it turns into a giant tree. Yeah, and it can't take a, a, a flesh form apparently cause it's imperfect is what this dude explains who this dude is, how he emerges. That's the creator. From- I mean, I guess, yeah, but it emerges from this little thingy, uh, which looks like it came from maybe above. From the, I think, really? I thought it came from a tree and then returned to a tree. Am I wrong? I mean, I feel like this is the, okay, there are two different things going on here. So this thing yes. attacks yes. and this suddenly appears. I don't think this orby thing here is, okay, so the very next panel on the next page it turns into this dude. It could. Right? Oh, it comes from the ground. Yeah. It, it, so creator dude comes from this, whatever. It, this is, I don't know where it came from. Maybe it came from the ground. Did it come from above? No idea. I feel like you can see the broken earth around it. So it came as from the, the ground? Then? As the earth cracks and then he comes out from it. You see how he kind of is. Yeah, he definitely comes from it wherever it comes from. Yeah. So yeah. it, it, it talks to Fushi and it basically tells him, you know, and we get this little glimpse of him. He seems kind of like he hasn't seen a lot of sun there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, uh, yeah, he tells Fushi, you got to attack it. Go get it. Mm-hmm. it it's, it's, uh, it's your enemy. Fight. It's it. your enemy. Fight and win. Yeah. Yeah. So what the heck is all this? And then you get the, the showdown where Fushi, has to use all his forms and it's the march form suddenly. That... What an what a great battle. That is cool. I love that sequence. Me yeah. too. Him having to think really cleverly and each yeah. form is being stolen from him. So he's less and less to work with and he has to find a way to overcome it with each form. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And then yeah. to get that center in order to, so there's a lot that we could discuss about, or there's a lot we could speculate about what all this means and the deeper meaning behind all of it. Like, I wonder, since we think that a lot of the story is potentially revolving around identity and loss and, uh, you know, grieving and taking on the person that you lost with you and learning from them. And with death comes new life and comes new, new um, progress and understanding, you know, like all these things that we've discussed. So then you have to wonder, okay, this thing, this nature-based creature branches intertwined that thieves that progress that you've received. It steals the identities that you've taken on through the losses that you've encountered in your life. What is that supposed to represent, right? Do you have any theories? My only theory I can come up with at the moment is connection is beautiful um, and it's transcendent, but I suppose in one other way, it can also be very frightening. The idea Mm. of your ego, yourself being absorbed into a bigger thing um, Mm. and that you lose that individual identity in the process of being absorbed. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it is interesting how this thing is is seemingly a creature like, but unlike Fushi. Fushi yeah. was created as a, an orb. This thing has a kind of an orb at its center. It's called the the creator dude 
calls it a core. Yeah. Right? And that's the thing that holds everything that's stolen. Yeah. So I feel like this thing is maybe um, created by another semi-divine or divine entity or, a, or a failed experiment. And that Fushi has yeah. basically to face up against this thing, that Fushi is an attempt to, to learn um, maybe he's, you know, either a counter to this thing or he's the 2.0 version of it or something. So I, I think that it's another divinity that created this, um, yeah, at the end like of it. the battle, it says, yeah. we have a grand objective to preserve this world. Yeah. What you just thought was a being sent here to impede that project. So yeah. sent here, I assume yeah. the creator that we've been introduced to and did not we send it. Is a we as well. So there's more than one. Yeah. Well, I thought we was Fushi and I. The oh, okay. maybe. But I mean, it's just we have a grand objective. And I don't know if that means creator dude has, you know, other creator dude. That, okay. All right. Yeah. No, I see. I maybe. see that thought. I just assumed it was creator yeah. and Fushi. Like I created you yeah. so that we could partner together. But no, that's a good point. There could be more people with this objective it is yeah. interesting because the beginning of volume one he sent fushi to observe yeah. not to preserve the world to to uh -huh. observe now his objective is to preserve the world so i'm curious if something has changed like he observed and he's determined the world worth preserving mm -hmm. or, that, or they i guess i shouldn't gender this being um right or <laughs> or uh if it's like that was always the objective and the we is what you've what you've uh, put forth that there's multiple deities that their objective is to preserve and Fushi is simply the eyes that go ahead. I don't know. I have many thoughts, but I definitely am under the impression that there's another deity that's trying yeah. to impede their mission. Or group even. What do you think of this? So in March form, Fushi yeah. snaps the core off yeah. successfully defeats it and you know and it it's dissolving or whatever and march has or, or fushi they have this core in their hands and it sort of liquefies or, or yeah. it, kind of, it, it deflates and the next panel what do you think happens with it because you see her these veins going up her arm and you see it kind of just turning into smoke dissipating does so she does does Fushi absorb that thing here? Is that what we're meant to think? What the way I took it, when she or he, when Fushi in March's body yeah. squeezes the core, there's right. a liquid that pours out, and in it the gets back the boy, you can see in the in the panel that there's the boy's face, there's the wolf face. Oh, nice! Right? Yeah, I didn't even notice that. You're right. And the bear must be in there. The bear, the bear's in her knee. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bear's in the knee, and it's the wolf in her leg there. Yep. Yeah. So she's definite, or, or Fushi. They are definitely reabsorbing the identities exactly. That had exactly. That so stolen. if yeah. you'll skip back one page from where yeah. you are. When yeah. she squeezes the core, the liquids go onto her hands. Yes. And so the liquids are like getting into her again. And that's what contains the other identities. At least it that's the that I took it. So she's reabsorbing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I wonder though, too, in this process, is Fushi also absorbing something from that creature that, that uh, they just defeated? Um, in other words, yes. Fushi is reabsorbing boy, bear, and uh, wolf, and uh, but in the process, is Fushi now more than Fushi was uh, yeah. before this battle? That's uh, a good point. That's a good point because the theme here so far has been through death, you gain more life and more understanding. So we've just yeah. defeated this creature. So through this creature's death, is Fushi also taking in the will and identity of this creature? That's a good question. Whatever it was, but I, I like this. This panel is really cool. Oh, it's amazing. And so are these panels, this realization of all these, they're looking at each other like, oh, okay, yeah, you're me now, right? And it's <laughs> back and forth. It's really cool. And then- yeah um takes the boy form again so she yep. does it seems to be the default form again it was the first one maybe i don't know the wolf was the first one well that's true yeah the wolf was first yeah, yeah you're right um and then the speech from creator dude whatever they're supposed to be called i don't think we know yet right 
yeah, I don't think we have a name for them at this point. How do you like the last words from from uh, Fushi? I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You always yeah, get the humor the, at the, the end of the volume. I like yeah, that. It was, good. it was good. It was very good. It was an epic battle. It was so well drawn. I really like the way um, the mangaka is drawing the way Fushi transforms in these in these sort of threads that wrap around and create a new form. I, I we already talked about it. I love the ingenuity of that fight, having to figure out which form is best, and then having them slowly taken away, and all of it. I thought was really br- brilliantly done. But then it also has me contemplating: okay, what does this mean wow. with the deeper themes of it all? I just so far it's been it's been a bit of a gut punch, but a very well constructed, interesting story so far. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, and we got on a long time here. I didn't realize. I just looked at a clock. I'm like, Whoa. Okay. That was fun. Was fun. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Well, thank you, Murphy. Uh, this is cool. I'm, I'm liking the series. Uh, so let's see where it goes, I guess. And next time Perfect. we will be back on Murphy's channel, Murphy Napier Reviews. And uh, love to hear what you guys think of To Your Eternity up to this point. All right. Until next time.